Okay. What is the red marble doing there? I know a lot of you guys must be asking the question, what is the red marble doing there? It was January 8, 2014, and as I remember, it was my first day of school at ISM. It was history class in the morning, and just like everyone, I followed them, and I took my, I went to my bag, and I went to take something out. I took my notebooks and my papers, and I put them on my table, but then I looked to my left, and then I looked to my right, and I noticed that people didn't have notebooks out on their tables. They actually had their laptops. This is completely new for me, and like technology, the relationship didn't start too well, and then it changed a little bit more. When I started to see the way uh, the, the conference, the, the lecture was going on, as my professor kept talking more and more about the World War II, and kids just didn't seem interested. Everyone was into their laptops, everyone was just completely disrupted. Some people were on Facebook, some people were uh, playing games online, and there was one really peculiar kid who was on rentalama.com. And it just, it just didn't end there, yeah. So my relationship, as I tell you, start with technology, started off pretty, pretty rocky. But things just started to get better and better. Days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months, and then slowly, slowly, every single thing that I was a part of, technology had a more, more and more important role in my life. I started off as that red marble, but things, and th things slowly, slowly started to get better and better. This over here is a picture of my student council, some, one of my activities that takes up the most amount of my time. And this summer, we had the really, uh, a really big task of actually designing our uh, badge banner, which you might have seen hanging gloriously down the hallways. So it was a tough task because one of us was in Japan, one of us was in the United States, one of, us, one of us was in the United Kingdom, one of us was in Japan, and I was actually in Reykjavik, Iceland. But how are we supposed to make this banner? So we simply used technology. This over here is a uh, screenshot of our, uh, of our Facebook group chat where we actually, where we actually uh, discussed amongst each other how to do it. We communicated. And then we used Google Docs to actually use that communication and collaborate together to actually get the work done and make that banner. So in a way, that's how my relationship with technology actually started and actually started helping me in every single task that I did. And this is just the start. And this over here is an example of our, this is our ISM, our batch uh, Google Plus page. So initially, uh, the, uh, the task of one, of the uh, one of the tasks of the student council is actually to make announcements, to keep everyone well informed about what's happening and what's not happening. So now we didn't need to tell teachers to tell students that, oh, the conference over is happening over here, or uh, the assembly, the whole school assembly is happening in the FAT at this time. It changed now. We had the Google Plus page. Hundreds and hundreds of views were now just one click away. We just had to go over there, press send, and suddenly the message was sent across to everyone. Technology had become a medium of communication, not only between a council, but actually between our entire batch. This over here is the Battle of the Bearcats, one of the most important responsibilities of the student council to actually organize. So some of you guys who may not know what Battle of the Bearcats is, I could somewhat relate it to what a house cup is, except it's not houses that compete. It's actually the various batches of the school. And the, the goal of this is not to compete against different batches or different events and try to win them. But the true goal is not to actually win the events by getting a gold or a silver, but actually to raise spirit. Yes, people win points based on who screams the loudest, not only for themselves, but as well for others. And now Snapchat has slowly become a really, really important part of our life. How, you may ask. So we, ha we created a Snapchat account in which every single person told us which locations needed people to, uh, to stream and which uh, locations did not need people to stream. And slowly, slowly we started seeing that each venue was getting filled up, everyone was cheering for someone or the other, and the, 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 like a miracle which we never expected to happen actually happened. And we actually won the Battle of the Bearcats through technology. And this, this was actually one of the activities in which I believe that technology played the most important role which is Jin or Janilla, as Ms. Maz uh, talked about earlier, right now. So Jin is uh, a network of students across Manila who are all environmentally, who are concerned about the environment and actually want to find a solution to all of these problems. So once a year, as this year uh, it happened again, uh, students, uh, all the students come together and they discuss the various uh, global issues in our world and they try to find solutions uh, to them, known as action plans. So now you're going to ask me, Mir, how, where did technology play the role? They were just talking to each other. Why did you need technology? Technology, ladies and gentlemen, actually held the core of the entire conference. Because once those action plans were created, it actually helped us create a network, a community. As actually this year's theme was even Bayanihan, which is the uh, Tagalog word for community. 
It helped us build a community amongst each student, and each student who is part of the conference writes monthly updates about how the action plan is actually progressing in the school. So now it played an even bigger role in my life. Not only was technology helping the student council, was it helping my batch, but it was actually helping Philippines, but more importantly, a wor the world in general. And so now came the time when I needed to find a conclusion to this presentation. So what did I do? I took a nice long walk down the beach, and I tried to find my conclusion. So, so thinking more and more about my conclusion, I realized something. I went from a life that was completely where technology was completely limited, where it wasn't needed, to a life when it was completely dependent for me. I needed technology in my life to do every single task. I noticed that it's not only my story, but for every high school student, technology is becoming a more and more important part of our life, one aspect at a time. So that's why I tell you teachers, continue with your endeavors and actually promote the use of technology further because we students need it, not only for the present, but actually for the future. I hope you guys have had a great conference and you've learned new methods of teaching that you didn't know, learned new perspectives on issues that you didn't think you knew before and got more to think about. Because, and after thinking about all that, I ask you guys, to actually, how exactly will you get your students to connect technology to the real life and actually reach your goal, which isn't to get us good college acceptances or get higher test scores, but to actually make us more concerned and better members of society. Thank you.